you're going to need to, in the future, come around. Or just wave. Well, hello, everybody. What's your name? That was Julian coming by. Uh, thank you for your help tonight. And here we are at the Durham Low Carb Support Group. And I'm, I apologize for not posting earlier today uh, um, to say we would be live, but here we are. And um, so I'm uh, going to just wait for some people to sign on and let us know where you're, you're looking from. We have, of course, the monthly low carb support group here in Durham at the Hilton Hotel on Hillsboro. I think it's 2600 Hillsboro or 3600, one, one of those, and Hillsboro Road. And you're always welcome to join us here live or, or on, the, on the live. So New York, Atlanta, Ohio, uh, from uh, Sonoya, Georgia, Antonio, San Antonio, Florida, Somerville, all right, well, so we have some good, you know, southern representation, um, and uh, Ohio, sorry, that would be Midwest, but, uh, Connecticut, here we go, and Iowa, all right, Florida, so welcome, everyone, and great holiday wishes, um, can we give everyone holiday wishes, yay, yay. Happy holiday. Uh, and I don't normally, um, you know, embarrass you, or, or if you, unless you want to be embarrassed here, where I'll ask, if it's your first time here, will you come up and just tell us why you're here and how you got involved with this? Um, and um, Casey, I, it gives her regrets. Casey Durango, go keto with Casey. She and I have done this together for a while, um, and she got caught in some incl inclement weather. So uh, she's not going to be able to make it. And my tech support, Kyle, called in and said, hey, Doc, it's my birthday. Can I, you know, get off? You know, he does this for free. So, you know, it's like, uh, no, you can't have a birthday dinner. So Kyle, Kyle won't be behind there. So thanks, thanks, Patricia. So it's 3800 Hillsborough Road in Durham, just in case you're, you're driving on the way. Um, don't forget there are it's Google Maps and all that. Uh, but so this is my second time doing the iPhone thingy, with, and I want to know if you can hear, if you can see, and we, of course we have special holiday decorations for you. Um, and uh, uh, okay, well I think I soft shoot enough, and uh, of course thanks to thanks to the hotel. There's a, a buffet dinner that is put on that is keto friendly and several of you have already partaken of it so thank you um would anyone like to break the ice and tell tell us why you're here no? yes or even questions. even old timers you don't have to be be brand new I have would you like to come on down right. and while you do that i have to connect something to the phone so, okay. so right. you can, you tell know. us who you are, and, and you know you can actually okay. see yourself there. Actually, I think I put in hello from Durham, but I got no response from you. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that's because you're not from Durham. Well, you said, where are you coming in from? OK, there's always a smart. I'm sorry, I got <laughs> it. So uh, you can come up with oh, a little, little bit. You see okay. you see. Oh, all right, my question concerns keto and osteopenia. Is keto bad for osteopenia? Or does oh it my help? goodness, what is osteopenia? Isn't that a precursor to osteoporosis? Right, so that's where the, you lose, um, lose bone calcium. Yes. Right. Um, and by any chance, a close friend of yours or, you know, has this problem? It may be yeah. me, but I could have been breathing during that x-ray, so I'm not quite sure. Well, that's it. So the the way it's measured has some issues with the okay. technique, and you want to make sure you're getting it measured over time. Life is not a you know a snapshot. Okay. Although I suppose if it was a, um, off the normal range enough, you only need one reading. But okay. I'd have to say that nobody knows. All right. 
there's a, a it's lack. It's not my favorite answer, but yeah, I, I seem to get it a lot here. Well, well <laughs> but um, if you follow whatever the problem is, right. osteopenia, and you follow um, uh, artery issues in, in the heart or, or the aorta or the, the neck, you follow things like blood levels of blood sugar and triglyceride and HDL, um, these are the markers that would that would think or, or tend to be healthy. And I'm afraid with osteopenia, this is one of those things where um, as more and more people do low carb diet or keto, why don't you start a Facebook group? <laughs> um, well, no, no, seriously, okay. I have a, a story for this in, you know, as usual. Um, well, but so if, if there's an issue, a medical concern or a problem that you've fixed or you, you reversed or you're much better with, or, or there's an unknown area, uh, there are two examples of this. The cholesterol question, of very high levels of cholesterol. First, uh, that there was a Facebook group that uh, Dave Feldman got together called Lean Mass Hyper Responder, and now there are thousands of people in that Facebook group who are comparing notes on okay. my, my blood levels are high, what's going on over time, and then he actually got a GoFundMe uh, research study to actually study people who have very high LDL levels. And, okay. and so that makes me wonder if maybe if there are enough people worried or concerned about osteopenia, osteoporosis, that you could band together in a Facebook group called Keto and Worried About Osteopenia. <laughs> okay. Or, or, or Keto, keto and, and Osteopenia. Osteo. So then, osteo anything. Osteo or bone issues. Okay. So, yeah. um, the reason for that, uh, so that there's that cholesterol thing that has led to a study, and there's a, a good uh, reason that the high LDLs would not be a problem when you're not eating carbs. So there are a lot of people who've had super high LDLs and they have these normal coronary scans, mm -hmm. which doesn't compute. If you have high LDLs, you're supposed to get coronary disease, right? right. Well, we, we don't think that that's necessarily the case, but rather than put our head in the sand, we want to study it. So if you have a super high LDL, go to lean mass hyper responder uh, study at cholesterolcode.com and you can see if you qualify, you get a free trip to LA and a free coronary angiogram, not not CT, not, not just a CAT scan, the coronary score, it's like the actual looking inside the arteries for free Sweet. at baseline and then at follow-up. Now, the results aren't in for that, but at least it's getting studied. Um, the other, uh, in February of this year, uh, the other Facebook group, um, uh, a young woman came up to me and said, I fixed my MS, my multiple sclerosis. With keto? And, uh, with keto. Nice. And I said, hmm, very interesting. You know, and it was listening and heard the story. And, Sure was. It's what I call a credible anecdote, you know, because okay. because in, in medicine we dismiss things as oh that's anecdotal, or or you know you hear it and it's an urban legend, it's a myth. Well, no, this was you know she had the right the records, the right language, the records, and okay. now whether it was keto that did it, I don't know. Okay, could be a coincidence. Could be coincidence. Right. But I said, why don't you start a Facebook? Keto and, and MS, okay. and so and that Facebook group she you know blames me for, <laughs> for saying you know hey why don't you start a Facebook group and she did it and now you know there are hundreds of members right. since February. So I should start a group and Perhaps. blame you and blame me, but or if it's a good result you can credit. Me. <laughs> but it, it's a, now you know this is the classic you come to a committee right. with a question you tell the person to go out and start a committee okay. I mean so I don't know so okay, actually if, if, if any of you have had results or, or good or bad good or bad you've been on keto Keys low carb yeah. um, you've had multiple scans um, and and it's not favorable I mean we need to know right right so there is one study that's out to a year but I would say that that's not enough okay my other question was D3 supplements with keto, no problems, correct? I don't know. Don't know. You know, vitamin D3, it's one of these things that, um, gosh, it's uh, uh, it's like a panacea, isn't it? It'll fix everything. 
D3 uh, I, or yeah, the sun? D3. Yes, day two, right? Well, the sun will. So, so um, it's, it's all right. So, you know, have you ever had a doctor ask you what you eat? You know, more than cursory, cursory. like, but well, not me. me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, but, so doctors feel like they have to give you things, medications and supplements and all that. And, and you can have a low vitamin D level and you can raise it with a vitamin D vitamin. But there, they we're in that period of time where there are not great outcome studies, okay. uh, prospectively, of giving vitamin D to cure really anything. You know, and it's really interesting. People come in, they swear I feel better on it. But people felt better on these vitamin B12 shots. I was going to ask about vitamin Which were, were, you know, this kind of old-timey doctor, and you come in and, and we think it's placebo effect or, okay. or the effect of having a, you know, <laughs> shot in the rump. Shot, shot. But, um, so, so I don't know. And, I, I, and I'm not a vitamin guy. I, I still believe that, yes, Get sunshine and you get your vitamins and minerals from your food, and so you're, so you're eating a properly formulated low carb diet. There's no need for supplementation. All right, that's it. I will start a group though. That's all. Stay tuned. You, that's you, it. You I know. I usually questions. have like a list you, you don't know from the floor. I would come <laughs> in with a legal pad. Yes. And you typically drive up from the Charlotte area, yes. right? Yes, but somebody beat me for distance this go around. Somebody here is from Greenville, South Carolina. Well, that's, yeah, and, but now, um, it's been a while since we were back face-to-face, -face, yes. and I know for a while you were looking to get a group going in, Charlotte. in the Charlotte area. How's that going? It started off very well, and then 2020 just kind of took the wind out of the sails. So. I think it's time to, to gear up. I'm trying to gear that up again. So maybe I, I can think of another Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> Low-carb Charlotte. Uh, I have a digital keto is what it is. So it has... Facebook page, a website, Twitter account, maybe an Instagram, maybe a what's another so uh, maybe a YouTube, which I'm just reposting his stuff that I find. Yeah. Well, but yeah, so if someone was in the Charlotte area wanted to get together, yes. face to face, face -to -face well, they would find you at questions at digital info at digitalketo.com. Fantastic. All right, thanks. thanks. And how's the tennis? Oh, it's going great. Oh, you know, anyone can tell someone not to eat carbs. In fact, one of my my niece came to town for a while, wanted to go to nursing school. It didn't work out. And she shadowed me at the office and said, you know, Uncle Eric, I can't believe it. You just tell people not to eat carbs. And I said, yeah, it's a pretty good gig, isn't it? Pretty good gig. And, I mean, she said, hey, you tell people not to eat carbs and you get paid for it. So, you know, when it becomes so widely known and, and not controversial, I, I, will I have a job? You know, yes, because there's an art and a knowledge base to getting people off medicine. So the deprescribing. So so that I, I, I worry with the internet work and all that. If you're on insulin, you're, you don't understand what insulin does. That the insulin might become too strong, too fast, and so you want to do this with someone who understands how medicines can be reduced and eliminated. So I came, I had my, my Durham clinic today at Duke and, um, and you know, I, I just, uh, I'm saying things like, you know, you can reverse diabetes. Wow, I've been on, I've been on insulin for 20 years. Yeah, yes, you can. And uh, actually I presented a conference for Duke recently where I pulled two cases. They both had been on insulin for over 20 years. And I, I tracked it back in the Duke medical record. So Duke has it all in electronic form. And and this one fellow, actually, fellow, 70 year old man, um, used his own continuous glucose monitor that he got kind of on the, it was a rogue monitor. His doctor didn't prescribe it to him, but he used his own blood sugars to titrate his own insulin down. And he, uh, he had been on insulin for 20 years. and lost 20 pounds and, and is almost off insulin when he, when he came to me for the first visit. You, you know, can you imagine? So people are coming to me already on the program having results, or some people wait. That's also an interesting thing, why someone would wait six months to, to get started. But um, uh, he was scared to go off the insulin. He, he, he had low blood sugars on five 
units or 10 units of insulin where that's where I would tell people to be off the insulin you know, immediately because he remembered in his mind that he would always need insulin, the doctor said. He didn't always need insulin. And, and so the, if you've been told certain things, the but times change, you know. It, it's, and I'm working on that. I wish Casey were here to, actually, who wants to pretend to be Casey? Give me a hard time. Um, the, you know, a lot of, if you were told that you needed insulin forever and you'd always have diabetes back when we were using phones with cords. We have new technology now. And, and I know some people don't even don't want to use a smartphone, but you can actually take a picture with one and, 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 um, uh, and you can stream yard, uh, you, you know, Zoom like this. So anyway, um, what I'm trying to say is go to a doctor who knows the new technology. Uh, even if someone's told you, you will always have something, you know, for a certain period of time. Uh, that uh, so the MS uh, uh, reversal that wasn't the first time I'd heard that kind of observation. Some incredible anecdote. So um, this other credible anecdote that through Facebook has another story is the type one diabetes, uh, type one diabetes and keto. Uh, Dr. Dick Bernstein, a type one himself, wrote a book about how you can lower carbs and have normal blood sugars even if you're type one. And so Dave Dykeman and his dad contacted Dr. Bernstein and created a Facebook group called Type One Grit that started with just a few people. And now there are thousands of people with type one diabetes doing low carb diets. There were so many successes that I got one of our Duke Endocrine Fellows to do a survey of their Type One Grit Facebook group. And, and that survey led to the most commonly cited publication in the journal Pediatrics during that year, because these children had normal A1Cs, normal blood sugars, which is not achievable if you feed carbs and use more insulin. So, um, and, I, and I'll just never forget the rebuttal reply editorial was, it was just a Facebook survey. And so the, the naysayers in the medical world said, don't believe it, because it was just a survey. Well. Dr. David Ludwig at Harvard actually threw in extra money to validate the numbers that people were saying by calling the doctor's offices. So I'm afraid the, uh, this one doctor in, in New York, Dr. Bernstein, threw this dad and a patient, uh, a child with diabetes, um, did this Facebook group. They're changing the people's lives. And we asked them at Adapter Life Academy to write a course. And I think it just closed last night for the enrollment. I, I, I someone check please online. Uh, he, he and his family put together this wonderful course of how you implement low carb diets with type one diabetes. And it's, we open the enrollment and then close it and then have um, um, question and answer time. And that's the type one diabetes course at Adapter Life Academy. Uh, and I, it's a wonderful course. It's, you know, not, not for the, you know, people who, who are, who are um, how should I say, lazy and don't really want to be involved with their kids. And I mean, you know, so you have to take it seriously. But um, that is, a, as you learn from their family, it's a big shock to have a child diagnosed with type 1 uh, and, or, or to be in a relationship with someone so anyway so these are Facebook group beginnings and because you know it kind of makes sense this is a grassroots movement you know you're not going to get the the Dean of Duke Hospital to say you know let's not have carbs at the you know, at, you know unless you put my name in for a Dean or something. <laughs> uh, yeah. have I relaxed things so that you want to come up and say hi yeah, come on. I'll be the Yay. And I'll go through some of the um, questions or comments in, in just a minute. So hang in there. Hey, how are you? Hey, Who I'm, are you? I'm April. Hey, April. Nice to Welcome. meet you. Um, we're from Greenville, South Carolina. And I've done. No, that's not so far away. Not too far. Just a little under four hours. Yeah, four hours. Yep. So. It's right beyond um, Carolyn. 
Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Carolyn's well, one of the theme parks. Uh -huh. We've got some of the greatest. <laughs> oh, sorry. Some of the rides. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I've been doing keto for a few years, and um, I've lost 90 pounds. I stopped doing keto when we had a big life change and moved, and I have gained back in the last year and a half 25 pounds in, in the weirdest areas, you know, right all in my front area. Um, and so I guess my question would be... Are you back on track? Yeah, I'm back on track. I'm back Easy. on... Again. Yes, I'm back on doing, you know, your protocol or resident and your carb infusion mm -hmm. because I was hearing a lot of voices and kind of self-deceiving, um, telling myself I'm doing keto, but then just, you know, eating a sweet potato here and doing this there, and it wasn't really working. So I bit the bullet, went right back. Feel amazing. I've lost it. Good chunk of weight, just about 10 pounds in the last 12 days or so. Yeah. Um, so, nine steps forward, two steps back. Yes. And now you're back. I'm back to it. Back to it. Feel great. Um, prior to regaining those 25 pounds, I was at the 90 pounds loss, and I was feeling. Wait, really no, think, let's go up just a step down. Thanks. I was feeling really, really good. Um, and was maintaining. I think I maintained for about uh, just about a year where I was at. Um, and so I guess I'm wondering, <laughs> I've been obese my entire life since childhood. I weigh less now than I did when I was 10 years old. So I kind of don't know where to land. Um, I clearly, even when I was at my 90 pounds loss, was thinking I could get, I could at least get to a hundred pounds loss just because it sounded like a cool number to get to. Um, but I didn't really know where to fall because you look at me on a, on a BMI chart or something like that and it says, you know, oh, you're overweight or you're obese. And let's imagine you're about 5'2". I'm 4'11". 4'11". I'm 4'11". Okay. I got these little platforms on oh, here. Oh, okay, that's yeah. it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I'm short, short. Well, you, can, you can look at, like, the weatherman can predict whether it's raining here or not. It's not perfect, but they can get in. Yeah. So BMI or, or you look at body charts, but weight charts for me and for me, you know, you know um, you'd want to be in the low 100s yeah. probably. And even though you weren't there as a kid, yes. you may be able to get there now. I mean, do you have a crystal ball? No. <laughs> Neither do I. Yeah. And so um, uh, it, it's in my realm of experience where I've seen people tell me their weight lower than they were high school mm -hmm. and and so it, it, I often will ask what was the best weight of your life you know when you were 18 or something and Casey hates me for asking that but anyway <laughs> it, it's a, just another tool of where you've been as an adult uh, post puberty and um, sometimes that's not useful because obesity hit you early yes. like that so I would say you know get with a practitioner a group follow up connects people mm -hmm. who will um, give you that kind of benchmark and um, uh, an actual number is not so important yeah you know, it's how you feel yeah whether the blood work looks all right looks good. metabolic syndrome is gone yeah. basically um, and uh, I don't you know the, the first thing they do is to turn the direction that now you're losing weight to get comfortable mm -hmm. I, I my patients wouldn't tolerate a year-long plateau and stay with so there's some tricks that I've learned you know, that um, uh, even I got now, a, and I'm trying to figure out how to best use it in my clinic, a metabolic rate measurement tool. Okay. It's not perfect, but it gets you kind of in the ballpark so that I might even reintroduce that term called calories. <laughs> but I don't like that, but I don't want to, but sometimes I do. You know, the amount someone eats can matter even if you're not eating carbs. Right. Yes. So, um, yeah, I ran into that as well. That's the kind of habit of eating, the, the uh, Casey tells the story of, of, you know, am I eating out of hunger or out of habit? Yeah. And if you're open the pantry and you're wondering why you're there, you shouldn't be there, mm -hmm. right? And uh, there are all sorts of things you can introduce uh, to get you out of that habit eating. Uh, you don't have to eat three meals a day. And I, I one, there was someone who literally like cried in my office 
of tears of joy because she said, I never liked breakfast. And he, she, I mean, it was, I never liked breakfast. And now you say, I don't need breakfast. Oh, this is wonderful. And like, <laughs> like, of all the things I can say, I never thought that would make someone cry in a good way. Yeah. You don't have to have breakfast if you're not hungry. You don't have to have lunch if you're not hungry. In fact, in, in one of my travels, I, I blessed to have been teaching this around the world pre-pandemic, and I got to meet and spend an hour with someone who studies lions in, in South Africa. Yeah. And so I, I could, for an hour, I was asking him questions. You know, what do lions do? What are they? How do they eat once a week. And, and you know, if you think about it, they don't just get food in refrigerators or, or sent to them. They're actually out and having to kill their, or find a dead animal. Um, and so I'm reassured that humans don't need to eat three meals a day with two snacks yeah. and, and then worry about whittling away to nothing if animals like that can, can survive and be healthy and you know, strong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, they do eat about, the uh, adult lion eats about 30 pounds of meat once a week. Wow. With that, you know. <laughs> yeah extra knowledge that I don't know that that would be feasible for the average human. Uh, although, um, uh, anyway, so I don't know. Why don't, why don't we follow you along from here on and check in from time to time and, and yeah. we can um, help you as you continue to yeah. welcome. Yeah, thank and you. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Um, Four eleven. Yeah. And three quarters. And three quarters. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's like you know. Just call me five. Children. How old? How old are you? Well, I'll be eight in yeah. December. <laughs> I think that means you're seven. All my children passed me out when they were young. <laughs> well, how did you learn about? I'm sorry. How about low carb or keto in the first place? I just um, got that. How did I? I think my mom. Yeah, like some, Family. some doctor online. Yeah, some doctor kids. online who'll go nameless. <laughs> no, yeah. I've, I've heard, yeah. heard Dr. Eric's, Eric Berg's name a bit over the last few weeks in the clinic. And um, he puts on a conference. He's a chiropractor who's retired internet influencer, does great whiteboard teaching videos. And uh, just beware, you don't have to buy all the stuff that he might imply you need. But um, uh, yeah, I, I actually I learned about Dr. Eric Berg when I was teaching in China, and uh, you know I said, "Who else do you know in the U.S.?" And, and it was so he had this worldwide influence very early on, and I, I came back and I contacted him, and he didn't know of all of these other. He thought he was the only one doing it. <laughs> you know, so, so it's interesting that people will silo themselves and teach and get big audiences. Uh, but it's been very influential in getting the word out. Um, but you make it very easy and understandable. But, and the card confusion, that was such clarity. Great. So if you didn't hear it on the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that our approach is to keep it simple and easy and end your card confusion uh, is a... Um, oh, gosh, some trolling going on here. That means we've made it, you know? Um, <laughs> The um, uh, Ender Carve Confusion book. I have to give a lot of thanks to Amy Berger for actually writing, the implement, in operationalizing most of the ideas. And uh, so it's a great read. There's also a companion cookbook that Scott Parker put together. He's a Michelin star chef in uh, South Africa. I think it's the first keto low carb cookbook actually put together by someone who has 20 years in Michelin star rated restaurants. And that the Kali rice with fresh cauliflower in that book is worth the, uh, worth the, uh, the book itself, I think. Uh, but um, he's got a course, Scott Parker, of how to cook from, you know, how to choose the knives to how to cut the meat and the veggies and all that. That's in the works at Adapt Your Life Academy. So hopefully that will, um, uh, uh, be out soon, so let's see. I think I can do a little troll blocking, huh? Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Um, okay. 
wonder if they're overweight. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, I don't have uh, my admins on to do the troll blocking for me. Um, excellent. So, oh, hello from Nova Scotia, Canada. Um, that uh, uh, yeah, chilly up there this time of year, huh? <laughs> We're going through in this you know December of it's 50 degrees all day today. It's kind of weird, and I'm looking well, how it's going to get cold tonight. Right, you know, 50, yeah, 55 degrees. Interesting. Um, so, any other questions? Uh, or do you want to say hello? New, old. Let me, let me hit some questions here. Ah, from Quebec. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> I, I love this fellow, hey, Casey. Um, someone once told me I should do meditation tapes. My voice was so calm, but then, then I wonder, does that mean I put people to sleep? You know, <laughs> I guess that's, that's bad, because whenever I have a meditation tape, I, I guess I fall asleep. But um, um, so let's see, any questions on the live feed? I'm hitting, I have some questions. Jude from Durham, there yeah, you are. I finally came in. <laughs> well, it was there. Um, yeah, Jennifer, Dr. Westman for Dean. Yeah, that'll be the day. Um, uh, let's see, my endo believes this way to treat diabetes was to continue with the standard American diet, the SAD diet, and just increase the insulin as needed. I know, Barbara, that, um, this is the common teaching and treatment that endocrinologists use. This, that's my field. So I'm an internal medicine doctor, which a subset of internal medicine is endocrinology. And in my building at Duke, there, I have world experts of endocrinology who are world experts in the medications. They really don't know anything about the diet. And I have to think they're, the researchers are trying to find the one little key that'll fix the diabetes no matter what you eat, no matter what you do, right? So, because most doctors can't control what you do, so they want to get the pill, the shot, the, the whatever, the surgery, so that it doesn't matter what you do, they'll be able to fix it. And, uh, you know, to be able to teach a diet change or to just bring it up as a possible way to go about it would be a huge leap for most endocrinologists who are just taught to use medication. Yeah. Um, but that, that, that's true even at a you know, world-class tertiary care, meaning academic medical center like Duke or Harvard or, or Mayo or Cleveland Clinic. I mean, the endocrinologists are looking for the perfect drug. Um, uh, Great. Yeah. So, uh, Ayla, for those of you who don't know, is Adapt Your Life Academy. It's a company I created with Glenn and Yale Finkel from South Africa to teach a simple, low-carb way of going about things. And if you want the latest of what's available from me, you can go to ericwestmanmd.com and see that there are different options depending on how you learn best. You might just have a sheet of paper. You might have a... Um, a, a, a book if you like to read things or you might want to take a class uh, all different ways to learn this simple method um, about how to do a low-carb keto diet so in brief w what I learned I didn't make up I, I basically borrowed what was known about 1988 from Dr. Atkins, Dr. Eads, Dr. Rosedale, Dr. Bernstein and put it together in a, a package and studied it and so we're known at Duke as being one of the groups that started the research on the low-carb keto diets. And I have to think it's uh, been influential in allowing the explosion of keto that happened on the internet. I think the, um, uh, the experts started saying there's a place for keto at the table, right? So they, they didn't say it was best or better. And, you know, it depends on the person and the metabolic situation. But um, so our group at Duke has studied and used this now for over 20 years, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, although it's kind of humbling because I thought, oh, we'll just do a few studies and the world will change and there won't be any obesity or diabetes, right? Um, no, 
not really. Uh, but it takes time for things to change, especially when um, when so much money is at stake, right? Uh, I've learned a lot this last year from uh, Dr. Vera Tarman, who is a addiction specialist and doctor in Toronto. And she has a book called Food Junkies. I highly recommend it. And I know for a while I, I was kind of put off Food Junkies. I'm like, oh, I think I read that book. No, it's a wonderful book. Um, and it has case examples of what food addiction looks like. And really, it's altered processed food addiction. And um, one of the main, two, two main things I got out of the book like, the first time I read it is that it's the ultra processed food companies that have created the problem we're in. So if you drop ultra processed food, basically the problem with food addiction, obesity, diabetes will disappear. And I, I think, you know, having heard that a lot, kind of dismissing, oh no, 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 I, I'm convinced now that it is a function of the food. Um, and you'll hear that as someone moves to the US, they start getting problems. And, and it's not not that they're not driving everywhere, although that's part of it. It's that the food changed so much. Uh, they started gaining weight, having, you know, they can't stop eating, I eat so much. You know, it's the, the food. Um, uh, so the ultra processed food part of uh, the, where this problem comes from, then in the treatment, Dr. Tarman uh, really convinced me that if you have an addiction, a food addiction, ultra processed food and sugar is a big part of that, uh, then you need to be in a support group. It's not an option. And, and she comes to that from the alcohol treatment, the other inpatient treatment programs, for example, where I mean, you, in some of these addictions, you can't even just live on your own. You have to be in a protected space without the cues, without the, the ability to use those things. So um, so if you tried low-carb keto before, didn't work, or now it's not working, it may be the absence or of a support group or support system that, that really is helping you do it. And that's one of the reasons why we at the Adapt Your Life Academy continued an ongoing support group. It was by popular demand. People wanted the, a monthly kind of, uh, uh, well, monthly payment, but um, a program where they could keep following with people that they uh, learned from and, and got to interact with. So um, we don't often, or I don't often talk about uh, the need for, for support or, and the social aspects of lifestyle because just changing the food and focusing on the carbs is, is so powerful. But if, so if you're, you're trying it again, it's not working, or, or you, uh, you know, keep the carbs really low, and, and the method I use it ensures that everyone will be in ketosis, which is the 20 total gram per day rule, 20 gram rule. Or you just get a sheet of paper and follow the, as much as you want of meat, poultry, fish, and shellfish, and eggs. You have a limited amount of greens and veggies. You get some cheese, mayonnaise, uh, but there's a limit to those high calorie things. And, and that's basically on a sheet of paper and you just follow it. Although I will say now, Here's your prescription. Yeah, well, because like a prescription drug, this has gone through enough research to show that it's safe and effective. It would be approved by the FDA if there was a process for approving a drug, a, a diet program like this. And then also to say that this is not an over-the-counter sort of approach. This is prescription strength, so that uh, it's, it will reverse diabetes. It will lead to one to two pounds of weight loss per week in just about everyone. Hunger goes away after a day or two in just about everyone. Um, insulin and, and um, other medicines like uh, antidepressants and, and Flonase nasal spray and gabapentin. And, and you know, even more and more, it's like, that doctor put you on that, uh, you know, but it co causes weight gain, you know. And, um, <clears throat> You know, so I, I screen for drugs that cause weight gain, and I've become the doctor I said I would never become. I suspected one, one drug, any any drug can do anything. I I, I, uh, I remember 
that old doctor. He says, any drug, that's just not scientific. And, you know, I would look through the side effects and the, the PDR, the, you know, physician reference and say, you know, ma'am, that, that side effect is not from the drug, or, or you know, sir. And, but I've had enough people come back to me and say, you know, you told me it wasn't the drug and it was. Like, well, but it wasn't on the list. And, you know, so the, the older doctors get sometimes, you know, the, the more we know, the less, or the, the we know that we know only so much. We, we have a limited knowledge. And uh, so if you, um, and often I'm just being a detective, like what changed in July when you started gaining weight? And, you know, I don't look for this, 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 and this, I just ask and say, what changed? Often I'll get, well, I started an exercise program. Yes, that actually can stop your weight loss. Well, but it, what, that, you, you just told me it did, you know? <laughs> so, but it can't, I've been told that exercise is for weight loss. And no, you just told me it stopped your weight loss. So, so often you have to just, examine what happened in your life without the preconceived notion of what is supposed to what is supposed to happen and uh, that's that's kind of fun but um, also you know disturbing because everyone thinks exercise fixes everything and and people come in frustrated this one person but I've exercised and I said I know exercise doesn't lead to weight loss but I've exercised and I haven't lost weight I know it doesn't lead to weight like what I mean, so we don't really talk about exercise in a diet focused clinic. We don't need it. And that was really important in the last week because, gosh, one person couldn't exercise because the knees were shot and they had to get knee replacements. They needed some sort of weight loss before. Couldn't That person couldn't. Well, I do have a friend who's in Houston, Dr. Horn, who would say, yes, she can. She can take armbands and do exercise. So there are some doctors who will insist you do some exercise, but I don't insist upon that. Um, yes? What about lifting? What about weightlifting yes. or, or resistance really bands? Or... Exercise. Right, so so I'm not saying exercise is bad. Don't get me wrong. It, it's just that it's not necessary at first. And then in the long run, I think exercise is good for, for toning, for and most experts say a combination of resistance and aerobic. Aerobic and resistance. Aerobic and resistance, yeah. And there was a book written, gosh, some time ago, but it was excellent. It was um, called The TNT Diet, like trinitrotoluene, you know, like dynamite, the TNT diet. I remember because Jeff Volek, the other university professor who started studying this 20 years ago, um, Jeff wrote it with Adam Campbell, who was at Men's Health. And, um, so check out the TNT diet for the combination of uh, resistance training and aerobic activity, which you know essentially something like tennis is perfect. You know, as, as long as you're now, I, I wonder about this shift to pickleball. You don't have to serve well. Oh, you don't have to serve well. Okay, is it a little less aerobic? Move your upper body a lot more. More upper, yeah. So, so that you'll know I've. I, really gone over the line of boundaries when you come, when you hear me raving about how great pickleball is. Because that's the other thing. Everyone raves about it. It's like, I don't even want to do it for a while just to let that rave go down. There's even someone who was putting in a, a, a resort with eight pickleball places in the back. And it's just for like a, one fam so they can all play. Anyway, it certainly, I think it's a great thing, although with any activity, you want to be careful as you, if you get started because of injuries. You know, if you if you haven't been active for a while and you then go back to something that you used to do at that same level, I've seen people get hurt, which is terrible. Uh, that um, so you want to come back to it slowly or, or with caution. Um, let's see. Barbara says I started keto August twenty three with a HS dose of insulin, uh, evening dose of 68 units, and I'm off all insulin. So it's August, September, October, November, plus a couple weeks. So that's um, fantastic. 12, 14 weeks 
off of insulin. I hope with monitoring, or, or you knew that if the blood sugar is under 100 or around 100, if you take insulin, that blood sugar is going to go way down. So I, that's the cutoff I use. If your blood sugar is 100 or so, do not take insulin. It doesn't matter what kind, even the long acting, don't take it uh, as, as you're tapering, of course, and not eating carbs. Um, Al from, from India. Hi, hi Nishal. Great. Glad you could uh, check in. Um, and other questions or comments? Um, looks like I successfully got rid of a troll. <laughs> and uh, it's funny, I said success, successfully. <laughs> but um, John says, I've lost 100, 100 pounds on keto, but I have a lot of loose skin. I'm a senior citizen and any, well, my definition of senior citizen has changed. You know, I don't know about yours. It keeps going up. And, you know, when AARP sent that thing at age 55, I was like, no, that's, that's not right. So, uh, but um, that's not being old. Um, well, loose skin is, it depends how long you've had the extra weight, how fast you've lost the weight. And uh, some people just keep the skin, others, go to their friendly plastic surgeons and have it removed. That's really a judgment call. Um, in our area, uh, removal of skin after weight loss is not generally a covered uh, covered plastic surgery. Uh, but um, if you get enough people and enough doctors saying it's necessary medically, sometimes you can get it paid for. But um, I don't know, John, I would focus on all the great things that have happened as a result of the weight loss rather than, the, than that. Um, as you're losing weight, I don't really know of anything that's been studied to keep you from getting the loose skin. It's fascinating. Um, occasionally people will come in, you know, these collagen pills or collagen protein and it's supposed to help. I don't, there's been no studies of this. Uh, a medical esthetician came once into our support group once and said, you should be scrubbing and you know, dry, dry brushing, and, and I, I don't know. I, um, if you feel like you want to do something uh, for the skin, you know, to keep keep it uh, um, the dry brushing and, and the, you know that sort of oil seems like a reasonable, healthy thing to do anyway. But um, you know, if you think about it, if you're a young woman who gave birth to a child, you stretch the skin. Most of the time that comes back. There might be stretch marks, but not, you know, extra uh, skin. So the older you are, the more likely that the skin won't retract on its own. Um, although we were at a support group uh, and I had sort of an aha moment. One of the reasons I don't really know about what to do with loose skin is I don't see it that frequently. So, and Casey, Casey Drango remembers that medical esthetician at Duke kind of observed that people who had lost weight using a low carb diet didn't have the same degree of loose skin. But again, that's just observation. It's not a study to, for me to say you definitely will have less, um, less of a problem. But um, uh, let's see. Cheese isn't bad, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I love Dr. Vera. Yep. I learned I'm a food addict. Oh, oh yeah, Barbara, well, welcome to the club. <laughs> Any food addicts in the audience? Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Do you think there's a role from oxalates for people with insulin sensitivity and an optimal low carb diet? Well, Lindsay, um, I don't know much about oxalates, and but I, but as I've heard some kind of zealous researchers talk about oxalates. Um, the method I teach is very low in oxalate. And so the, um, a lot of what I teach overlaps with other people's approach. And because I haven't specifically dissected out what component of what I teach gives that result, it may be that there's an issue. Uh, and, uh, but for example, sugar, there's a FODMAP diet for the simple sugars. Well, the approach I teach is a low FODMAP diet because there aren't many simple sugars. Uh, there's a gluten-free diet. Well, the diet I teach has no gluten in it, so it's gluten-free as well. <laughs> so uh, it may be that the, some of the partial 
reason for the results I see, the good results, may be because we keep the oxalates super low. But I don't specifically preach or teach about keeping oxalates low. It's just part of the method that I learned and I studied and that I teach. Um, um, so I hope that's helpful. Um, I guess the other thing, Lindsay, is that if, if you ever hear an influencer say there's an issue, you want to have a study. You want to have publication. You want to have a, a ideally a randomized controlled trial showing what they're saying is actually real in a prospective experimental manner. And our studies have gone back, they go back two decades. Of course, I borrowed work that people had done for 30 years before that. And of course, okay, that didn't count. <laughs> but um, one, I, there are a lot of in influencers out there who lead people astray be because they're so passionate about it. And you know, it may or may not work. I, you know, show me the data and then I'll comment on it. And that's my position being in a research academic setting and being a clinical doctor. I need papers to support what I do uh, or I'll, I will be given grief or, or get shown the door <laughs> at Duke. So, um, and oxalates is one of those things that it, there may be some people are really sensitive. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Um, I, I think that there are not prospective clinical trials on just taking oxalates out. What I do lowers the carbs and takes oxalates out. Let's see. Do you recommend IF? What does IF mean? Intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, I assume, not in vitro fertilization. <laughs> That's I idea. So I, intermittent fasting, uh, you know, it, I see as kind of a second tier thing to do. It, when you come into low carb or keto, you don't have to do intermittent fasting. And the reason I say that is some people will come to me and say, I just can't do that intermittent fasting, so I can't do keto. What? Oh, right, there's some people teaching that keto means intermittent fasting, or it has to be a part of it. No, it doesn't have to be a part of it. So my teaching is if you're hungry, eat. If you're not hungry, don't eat. If you're thirsty, drink. <laughs> if you're not thirsty, don't, don't drink. Well, how many of you were taught to drink uh, your half your weight in water as a weight loss method? You know, I don't know. It, you know, it probably will work to substitute for calories, but we don't worry about that. So, so no, I don't teach intermittent fasting. But if you end up eating between a certain time or one meal a day, and you're not hungry the rest of the day, and you want to call it intermittent fasting, it's all the rage to do. You say you're doing it at the cocktail parties, hopefully that will start up again, you know, in the holiday parties, but you don't have to do it. So if you're hungry, you should eat a little something. It's, that's my teaching, and I think it has more of a flexibility to it than insisting that you only eat certain for just certain hours. Um, then I'll, get asked, I will often get asked then, well, what about autophagy? I thought you had to fast for a certain number of hours before you get the benefits of autophagy. I, I don't know. I, 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 um, my hunch is you're getting the autophagy when you're not eating carbs because you're fat burning so well and you're getting all the other benefits of fat burning. Now, I haven't proven that, and but then the, the people who are the proponents of intermittent fasting with autophagy haven't studied keto diets. So there's sort of a mutual lack of understanding. Uh, um, and if you are eating carbs once a day or twice a day and you call it intermittent fasting, that's an entirely different uh, approach and, and it really doesn't work very well. That has been studied by this group at the NIH. They define intermittent fasting as eating in a time window, but they allow people to eat carbs. That doesn't work well. and that. The amount of weight loss that happened in, in the study they did, I, I, people wouldn't come back to me and pay for my services. So you always want to look at the, how much weight loss there was. Of course, the study was trumpeted as being effective. Well, it wasn't very effective, and it wasn't enough for people to 
pay for that service over a longer period of time. So unfortunately, the current NIH, our governmental uh, diet researchers don't understand nutritional ketosis. Um, but I hope that'll change over time now that studies have, are coming out of companies that are using this. Um, so anyway, so that, that's my story on intermittent fasting. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, let's see. I'm sorry, I didn't hear or see Christina's question, but um, let's see. Yeah, total carbs are, are what, um, what I teach because it's just more precise. Uh, and it's prescription level. It, it will work better. Uh, there's a question about total and net carbs. Net, net carbs is a recent sort of development that can work for some people and it allows for products to be marketed using net carbs, but it doesn't work for some people. And just changing from net carbs to total carbs will do all the change you need to make to get through a plateau or to get through, uh, uh, it's not working for me to try going to total carbs. Um, let's see. Joe says, through your YouTubes, I believe you've saved my wife's life. Well, uh, but isn't that what doctors are supposed to do? <laughs> I, you know, I thought about this. Do surgeons get on YouTube and, and get credit for taking out an appendix? You know? you know, my doctor took out the appendix and it saved my life. No, it's like, it's expected. <laughs> I, I, I doubt there are many surgeons who come out here once a month to say, thank you, I saved your life. No, oh gosh. But I, I'm so glad you feel that way. It's, I wish all doctors would do this. You know what I mean? It's not just me. It's the method. It, so, so in medical school, I was taught how to do an appendectomy. All doctors who become surgeons know how to do appendectomy. They, then that's, that truly saves someone's life. Like, if you never had it, you could be, you could die from this, right? And so, can you imagine the day when all doctors are taught low carb diets? And they, you can go to all the doctors and they'll just tell you this and, and you'll go in, you say, my life, doctor. And um, so, you know, I wish I had that moment where I'd come out of the operating room, you know, and take down my mask and go, Good, the operation was a success, your child survived. And oh, thank you, doctor. I don't, I don't get those sorts of things. But I, I hope, it, so it's not me, it's the method. So, I, and, and I, I'm just, passing along a baton um, but anyway I, I'm glad um, uh, save my oh, let me sorry save my wife's life we found you and changed to very low carbs for 50 years of fragile diabetes has now become much better controlled thank you well you're very welcome and uh, and this is not just um, a one-time thing this is replicable it's what I see all the time in my practice um, so thank you for, for saying that. Um, and let's see, as a retired doctor, I completely understand the frustration of sending a patient to the specialist who contracts, who contradicts the wisdom and effectiveness of keto. Yeah, yeah, I'm becoming less tolerant of other doctors though, <laughs> I have to say, one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, in an office. I, I still you know, don't want to call out doctors on YouTube, but, um, there are some who just really are, they're not helping. <laughs> you know, if, if the doctor's actively against a keto diet, I, I, heard, I heard that recently. I have diabetes, my doctor says, you, I can't do a keto diet. I'm like, what? Yeah, that's what reverses it. So um, remember, most doctors are taught about medications, not how to reverse diabetes through lifestyle. Um, let's see. Anne asks, or says, I'm trying not to be naive, but why is there so much pushback to this lifestyle by medical professions? I do podcasts and live events for diabetes and kidney disease. They don't want me to mention low carb. Um, any, anyone want to come up and talk about that? So, you know, if, if uh, like most professions, if you're not taught about it, you're, t you're skeptical, I think. I think that's kind of a general, you know, if I didn't learn about it and, no one's teaching me about it, then I don't, I'm just not going to promote it, right? Isn't that, is that true in your profession or, you know, but I guess if, if 
if you were taught one kind of computer programming and you're a computer programmer and the whole world is switching to something else, don't you think you'd go take a class on the new computer? There's something weird about medicine that is dogmatic and conservative and, and very difficult to change, uh, which I guess is a good thing in some ways. Uh, you don't want to be put on some weird medicine that's, that, that's going to kill you, right? You want to be conservative or cautious, but um, uh, I think it's mainly they aren't taught, taught it, and, and they are taught uh, by drug companies how great their products are. Of course, they're just managing the, the problem. Like for diabetes, it, it's, just, it's, I don't know if you ever watch cable or real TV anymore, my, my kids don't even that. Yeah, it's like, well, what you, didn't you watch? No, you know, okay. Well, there are all of these ads now that are just for medications. And one of my patients, maybe it was one of you guys, said, there shouldn't be jingles for drug drugs. <laughs> like, there was this one that was a song from our youth being turned into a jingle for, you know, the one I'm talking about? Yes. Oh, Zemtik. Oh, 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 I take that back. That's not, I'm not promoting it. But there, there shouldn't be jingles that go back to, oh, it's so my youth. <laughs> I'm sure there were focus groups, you know, a lot of focus groups saying which song would be the best, give you the best feels, right? You know, um, yeah, and, and the age groups would be different. Wait till we get uh, rappers being used to. <laughs> uh, oh gosh. Um, so, uh, what if someone doesn't have a gallbladder or has gallstones? So, you know, I have treated a lot of people without gallbladders with a keto diet, properly formulated keto diet, meaning no oils being consumed, like coconut oil, medium chain triglyceride oil, you know, drinking of butter, like a lot of butter. Uh, and there's no nausea. If someone has nausea, uh, it's usually the additives. It's not the diet itself, or it's metformin, a medicine that's commonly used. Um, so the gallbladder is is a um, kind of a, a little container, or, or um, you know, that can squeeze. Um, um, and if so, bladder meaning bag or, or sac, and it's supposed to be timed with the the consuming of fat. So the, the enzymes in the gallbladder actually help you digest fat. So if you're eating fat, normally you'll squeeze and the gallbladder will give the timed juice to for proper digestion. Um, but it's amazing how even without a gallbladder, most people do just fine. Um, and um, it just leads me down the you can go in and have a surgeon do weight loss surgery, which interrupts the flow of food and, and the timing of all the digestive juices, and you can still gain weight. The, the body is so resilient in terms of being able to absorb energy that all of the mini timing of all these different things that, that you know, the body's going to figure out. It, it's like you have this, it, it's going to jumble things around and you'll absorb it and, and, um, the, so just taking out a gallbladder is a minor thing compared to these other uh, operations. Um, but um, a gallstone it represents a different issue now. So let's say you've done a low-fat diet or you haven't squeezed the gallbladder completely for years and you now have some stones that, uh, that could not... Now they're eating a fat, full diet. The gallbladder can start to squeeze and it can actually squeeze and send out a stone. And if the stone's big enough, it gets stuck in your, your bile duct system, backs it up, you have a gallbladder emergency, you need to have the gallbladder taken out. So um, it, it got to, through the years, there was a time when that was kind of in everyone's um, awareness that surgeons doing the weight loss surgery would go in and just take out the gallbladder so they wouldn't have to worry about it. You know, kind of like the, oh, we're going in to take the uterus. Why don't we just take the ovaries, too? You know, it's like, well, I don't need that. I don't like that kind of logic, but 
years ago, I became a medical doctor and not a surgeon. So I kind of like things to be thought through. <laughs> but so that said, you, you could get a gallbladder attack after starting a keto diet. And it's not that the keto diet caught, did the keto diet cause, it was the low fat diet that caused the stone, but the keto diet that caused you to send it out. That can happen often, not often, but it can happen as well for a kidney stone. You may have a kidney stone that's there for, for the, the years and you start a diet that gives you a fluid release, uh, a diuresis, meaning water loss. So in the first few weeks or month, if you have a kidney stone or a gallstone, it might be that it was there before and it really wasn't this diet that caused it, but it made you be able to express it and get it out and that in it was painful. So, you know, um, uh, but that's why it's complicated. And even, even with gout, uh, I might give someone a gout flare early on in that first week or two of transition because there's a, a interaction between the ketones and the uric acid, which causes gout. And it's not that you shouldn't do a low carb or keto diet. It's just, I need to get you through that flare. And if a doctor didn't know about it, and for years doctors have been taught, and you'll read it in textbooks, that someone with gout shouldn't do a low carb diet because it'll cause gout. Well, but what happens when you get through the gout? Well, you lose weight and then you never have gout again. But Nobody gave it a chance to, to go beyond that. You know, it's kind of like the uh, early years of doing studies on this approach. People were very quick to say, "Oh well, that's going to cause this." You know, that's going to cause. In fact, now I, I suspect that if someone says it's going to cause it, it actually might help it. It's, it's the weirdest thing, um, but at least you need some research and and. Um, uh, Welcome to everyone. We're here at the Durham Low Carb Support Group in Durham, North Carolina at the Hilton Hotel 2800, Hillsboro. 3800. 3800, oh God. 3800 Hillsboro Road. Don't um, leave your home now. We're gonna, we go from 6.30 to 8, but you're welcome to join us the first Tuesday of the month. Uh, the hotel is kind enough to put on a buffet. You can eat before or during the low carb support group, meet other people um, who are in the, you know, meet your tribe as it's called today. Um, and thanks for joining us. Um, just going through some more questions. Um, Christine, hey, Christine says, when does one consider they've lost enough? How can I really tell since I've dieted most of my life? Yeah, well, talk to, talk to a doctor, a weight loss specialist, because there are several things we kind of went through uh, that depends on what, what your history has been, depends what your blood test looks like, depends what your what your occupation is. If you uh, if you're wanting to get into the ballet, for example, <laughs> you're going to have to have a different sort of habitus, uh, and you know, um, unless you were the uh, uh, anyway, <laughs> most are are pretty tiny. And, and so healthy doesn't just mean the way you look and your weight. It also means how you feel. It means, you know, absence of hunger so that you're not having to think about food all day long um, and uh, how the blood work looks, how uh, you might even get your, the arterial measurements. Um, I, I really like this company called Lifeline Screening. It's nationwide in the U.S. where you can go and get the uh, ultrasound outside the medical system so you don't have to worry about who's going to pay for it. Well, you do have to pay for it yourself, uh, but it's fairly reasonable. The reason I, I like checking that is all of the blood tests for diabetes, for, for cholesterol, are trying to prevent this arterial disease. So I won't worry about your blood levels if you don't have this disease, if you're 70. If you're, so if you've lived most of your life, you don't even have the disease we're trying to prevent. Your genes were set up to not have that disease. Not everyone in America we gets have, disease. We had our test yesterday. Mm -hmm. You told us about it. Great. And we did good. Great. We said no. So you had the ultrasound test? Yes. 
Yeah, did they, the technicians seem like they were awake and alert? And, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> they were very yeah, professional. Doctors, I, I've mentioned this to other doctors. Well, I don't trust those, that company. Yeah, like, we're, primary well, care doctors. Primary care doctors, why are you doing that? They have people, they, they have <laughs> trained technicians who bring in their ultrasound machines and, and you know, um, and they send you a report, right? Right. Yeah, so, you know, whether it's done by, you know, the highest paid doctor looking at it or the, the resident, you know, if there's no, if it's zero, that's really helpful information. It will relieve worry. If you're worried about, you know, gosh, how many times have I heard, my doctor wants me on a cholesterol medicine and he's so upset and you know, it's like, hang on. Let's see if you have the disease of atherosclerosis and let's see if using a medicine would be helpful rather than you know insisting upon taking a pill when you might not even have the disease. Was that reassuring for you? Absolutely. Yeah, but you know, our doctor called us. Why would you want to do that? And said, I want to know if I have a carotid artery. <laughs> Why do you want to know? Oh, yeah. So, so do, do, do you want to come up and tell your, your story? This sounds like a pretty good story. <laughs> now, you don't have to name names, but you know, <laughs> what was the doctor? <laughs> okay. uh, that's most of the story, but uh, yeah, our, you told us about the uh, Lifeline experience, and we, uh, we signed up and we did it yesterday. But when I told my medical doctor, that we were going to do it. He said, why would you want to do that? Why would you want the lifeline screening yeah, to get an yeah, ultrasound so, of your I artery? Said, well, you don't do this, some of these tests. You don't do the carotid artery. You don't do the tests that they're doing. He said, well, yeah, but if you, if you go there and you find out that you have something, then we might have to do something else and give you some more medicines. This is going to screw up, screw up the medicines you're already taking. It was a crazy conversation. So he said, why would you want to know? Yeah. Yeah. Why would you want to know if you have arterial that's, disease? That's what he said. Yeah. Now, is this doctor about my age? Uh, yes. Maybe even younger. Younger. Well, um, I don't know. there was a time when I swear <laughs> doctors were taught to just basically put their heads under the ground like an ostrich mm -hmm. and not even test. There was a time when you, when if you can't prove that getting that ultrasound led to an outcome, then we won't do it. But those, like those tests also are not paid for by your insurance. In other words, my doctor gives me a whole battery of blood that he pulls, and, and he does plenty of stuff. But the particular tests they give, he doesn't do. It's because the insurance won't pay for it. Yeah, so, so there was a time when it was so financially driven that if you can't... So your well-being or your anxiety is meaningless to me. And unless you show that getting this test led to an improvement in outcome, I won't have insurance, insurance won't pay for it. Actually, that's the way Medicare looks at it. Medicare, even today, needs some kind of outcome study before they'll cover it. But once Medicare covers it, all the other insurance companies generally follow. So, but the idea that it relieves your worry, eh, who cares about that? Well, you do, right? Yeah. So, so actually, I, I have to say that I, I have the, the, uh, I don't know, the luxury, the the, the great opportunity to work for and with people who didn't have to pay for medical care, you know, or, or they had so much money, they didn't have to worry about paying for medical care. So that takes away an entirely different mindset like from your doctor. Well, insurance doesn't cover. Well, now Dr. Tro Kalasian, who does the Low Carb MD podcast, I saw him up at Keto Fest, says, I can't take insurance. Eric, it's well, Tro, I mean, so it limits me. I can't be the doctor I need to be and want to be without taking insurance because people expect that the insurance will pay for it. So there are a growing number of concierge medicine people, meaning you pay out of pocket, but the care you get is going to be very different. They might even have said, they might even have that ultrasound machine in their office. Dr. Tro has one connected to his cell phone. But that information shouldn't be protected and, and uh, it, it should be, no, it shouldn't be just you should for, be able to get it. It shouldn't be just yeah. for elite people. For elite people. Yeah. Wow. So now you haven't taken your report back yet to your doctor. No, next week. Yeah, we're going to have it sent to him. Yeah. 
Cody didn't even send it. I, I couldn't have sent it to him because I made the mistake of mentioning it. I said, we're going to Lifeline screening next week. And he said, what do you want to do that? And I went, well, crap, I thought I was doing a good thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we blamed it on you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, well, I, I see it as credit. Likes you. Like yeah, it should be credit. Because we say, well, Dr. Westman says we should do this. Well, think about it. If, if you were <laughs> buying a house, would you hire an inspector to, to just, well, yeah, that house looks pretty good, you know. No, the, the house inspector gets in there, looks in the crawls walls, under the crawls under everywhere. Yeah. But you know, it, now I thought about it. People may or may not get the inspection. It's the bank that wants the inspection. Right? If you're getting a loan, they're the one who owns the house, right? So they're going to make darn sure that it's in good shape. There are some other parts of the story with him too that had to do with you. When, uh -oh. No, you're the good guy in this, but. When we, uh, when we moved here a year ago, uh, I didn't realize that you couldn't just be my doctor, okay? And so I put in, we, we called your office and they said, sure. But it was like six months before we could get into your office. So we were making do over Duke with little interns that were just yeah. giving yeah. us, yeah, you, you know. Yeah, you taught us about and, that. Yeah. But, so anyway, I thought we finally got this doctor but my medications, I mean, I, there was a point where I used to take insulin and they had me on all kinds of drugs because I've lost quite a bit of weight. And uh, so I was just monitoring it myself. I was eliminating this one, eliminating that one. And the first time I went to see him, he looked at this and he said, what about this? I said, I'm not taking any more. What about this? And I said, that's ridiculous. you got to take all of these. So he put me back on everything. You can tell Joey, the next morning I got up out of bed I couldn't even stand up. I was having, oh, to, I was having to hold on to the bed to keep from falling down. I was so dizzy. The medicine was way yeah. too strong now. Yeah. Yeah. So you got off those medicines? I did. Yes. Yeah. And now he's working with me a little bit. So, so imagine, so come back just a minute. Um, <laughs> what was um, the beginning weight, the current weight, the medicines, the diagnoses, what, just for those uh, New well, to I've got, I have had a long journey with this, but... This is a short story. Okay, well, <laughs> we have to still go back about seven years, okay? When, all of, when my health problems got their worst. I mean, I had a heart attack in 2010, and then I was diagnosed with diabetes, and I had uh, sepsis. I had uh, cellulosis in my legs and cellulitis. cellulitis, and there was a point where I... I mean, a, friend, a doctor friend of my son said, are you ready to lose your dad this week? You know, it was, uh, really, I spent a week in the hospital. So when I came out, that's when I started taking it serious. So over that seven years, I've lost about 100 pounds. And, uh, but there's been some ups and downs. Off medicines then, too. Yeah, I, I, I still take a few medicines, but I don't take many. You were taking insulin, you mentioned. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, taking, yeah. I, I've, I've been off insulin. 100 units of insulin? I've been off insulin for probably four or five years now. Okay. okay. Great. Thanks for summarizing. Um, we'll find out what the doc says. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so the, the idea of testing yourself is not something a doctor would come to because insurance doesn't cover it. Mm -hmm. you know, and even then, um, or you might actually have to have a pre-mini mini stroke for a doctor to recommend this. So we reserve it, and it's a financial thing, to use this thing that's really expensive, although it doesn't have to be. You know. Remember, Dr. Tro is, is taking this little handheld thing with a phone and doing these measurements. Now it's not the same as the technique. Well, that, that's the other interesting thing. If you're if you're not in a clinical setting where there's a lot of disease, you don't need the super trained person to tell the difference between, you know, mild, moderate to moderate, moderate. You don't need to have that discriminative ability. If if, if it's zero, I mean, a monkey can see that it's zero. <laughs> you know. So that's where, if you're using a test like this as a screening tool, 
you don't need it. I don't worry so much about how sophisticated the, the, the interpreter of the test is. Now, if it came back moderate, I, I'd say, well, you probably want to go to your doctor and say, you know, I need the real test, the real deal. So, so that's another uh, part of my training, which is using screening tests before the the um, the real sophisticated, high power, um, uh, expensive test. And there's a method to doing that. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think maybe five times I've ordered the coronary artery calcium score. I don't do it frequently. People don't ask me a whole lot about it. But you need a, you need a doctor's order to get the coronary artery calcium score, which again is about 150 bucks. Any radiology place uh, that is customer user friendly will do it with the doctor's order. Uh, and then, but I bet your doctor would say, "Why do you want that?" <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, that. So just remember, all of the blood tests that we do, the cholesterol, the diabetes is to try to prevent the atherosclerosis when it occurs in the heart, that's called coronary disease. When it occurs in the neck, this can lead to a stroke. And, and so if you don't have those kinds of issues, what you do with the blood is not really that important. Uh, uh, any other questions? So, um, Casey, Casey was here. She'd say, "Tell us about the January thing, <laughs> not just the January support group." The Beaufort? Beaufort? Yeah, no, we're not doing that this year. Oh, sorry. yeah. All right, then Casey would show. No, so <laughs> actually, so um, we haven't announced it yet, but the big thing in January is the um, Adapter Life Academy Keto uh, Challenge. So if you're, you know, this is December and you, know, you want to make a New Year's resolution and all, um, and yeah, it's, you want know, to slide through the holiday, that's okay. January 2nd, we're opening a keto challenge. And it's, um, it's $9, which is less than the $9.99 you have to pay for the page four at ericwestmanmd.com. I know it's kind of weird. But so anyway. <laughs> We're charging nine dollars because we did the keto challenge for free, and just didn't get much engagement. You know, so it's like just a little bit of skin in the game changes the 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 experience that people have. But we want to make it the best experience for you that we can. And it, uh, compared um, later in the month, we do the full class if needed. But so the keto challenge, you go to Adapt Your Life Academy website later this month you'll just sign up to be on the waiting list and that's how we keep you in on how things happen there um, rosemary says the tnt diet is the first book i read about the dieting wow that's fantastic um, you know just a little update on jeff volick um, jeff is the um, professor of exercise physiology and nutrition he's double phd just super brainy and, and also was the uh, I believe he was the powerlifting champion of Indiana. Right? So he, he, he walked the talk, still does, and is now at Ohio State doing phenomenal research um, and um, uh, was at U University of Connecticut, but now at Ohio State. Um, and I, I think he's making connections with the medical school side. I, I hope he is. Um, uh, and you know, just to explain, I, I'm on the medical school side and not on the university side so it's just a different focus I, I need things that work now you know a PhD on the university side might study you know how many angels can dance on the head of a pin that don't really that doesn't really you know I don't care about that <laughs> not that it's not important sorry God <laughs> but um uh, so we um, Oh, Anne says, orthopedic doctors have a booming business due to pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> does, does anyone know someone who hurt themselves playing pickleball? No? Yes? 
two, two people. Well, just beware. Diet's more important. Um, great. Oh, um, a couple of questions about mental health. There's a great book just out called Brain Energy. Brain Energy is the kind of a uh, grand synthesis of all brain problems are due to the disease mitochondria. You ever heard of a mitochondria? Well, it's the powerhouse of the cell. If it goes awry in the brain, then you start getting anxiety, depression, serious mental health issues. And Dr. Chris, Christopher Palmer, who's a psychiatrist at Harvard, kind of weaves this all together, and then, of course, -da -da, comes the low-carb diet uh, as a way to reduce strain and reduce the problem of the mitochondria. And, you know, it's basically putting out there as a hypothesis that carbs are the source of mental illness. Oh, wow. Has anyone suspected that you know, in your children? <laughs> I can totally understand that. Of course, yeah. yeah. Pardon? totally get that. Why would that make sense? Carbs are related to mental illness. Well, I, it does it in some ways, but then now that I'm off of carbs, I've decreased my anxiety medicine by um, two thirds in just the past six months Great. and feel totally different. So on a low carb diet, you were able to reduce your anxiety medicine. Yes. With supervision, with, right? Yeah. Of course. Yes. Yeah. With supervision. Yeah. But I know a lot of people that just are carb addicts, and they are mentally ill, yeah. manic and depressive. There's a great movie, documentary film uh, called The Magic Pill. If you've never seen it. Uh, I don't know if it's Netflix or, or you have to pay $3 or something, I don't know. But the magic pill is about the keto diet. And they follow a child with some sort of autistic spectrum disorder, you know, fixed. Of course, went through a little bit of, you know, transition, but then fixed. And that's the other interesting thing. It, it, if something gets worse when you change something, it changed. So sometimes things get worse before they get better. Right? Kind of like the gout thing, you know. So it's fascinating how uh, what I've learned is that it, well, you got worse, but that means it changed. So maybe it's related, right? So if you change the diet and something changes, it's related in some way. Now it might end up not being a good thing and make it worse, but it also might end up making it better. Um, so Scott asks, maybe for the audience. How to get back on the wagon. I'm addicted to oatmeal again. Yikes. Gosh, it's been, do they still make oatmeal? <laughs> How, what do you recommend getting back on the wa wagon? Don't keep it in the house. Don't have it in the house. Don't go to You gotta really wanna do it. You gotta really wanna do it. So what's, what's your why? Why are you doing it? And you know, I find a lot of people it's like, I don't know if there's such a thing called a social worker syndrome or nurse syndrome where, where you, you've given your life to everyone else. And, and the idea, so you might, you might, it might not occur to you to do this for yourself, but you'll do it for your grandkids or for your, your some other, you know, so you'll be able to continue what you're doing. And um, actually, it's fascinating to see, that I see a lot of givers who come in and then I just explain, you know, that's okay. I'll get you in shape for retirement. And then you can play pickleball. <laughs> if, if you're just joining us, I, I made fun of all the pickleball enthusiasm. And I, I, I'm kind of jealous, of, and we'll try it one day. But um, So I think you just get back on, on the wagon, Scott. Uh, I, I use the metaphor of uh, teaching someone to ride a bike. If you've ever done that child or with someone else, you know, the first few times they fall, they might cry, skin their knee, uh, and then, um, you know, sometimes you just go home and say, we'll try again tomorrow, right? But now that I think about it, what I did is I went to the grassy, uh, grassy field that had a gentle slope. So when my kids fell, 
didn't hurt. Now, was that saying that they're going to fall? Maybe it was a bad thing. No, I don't think so. So there's a, inevitably you're going to fall. You're going to get off the wagon. It, it's, it's just there's a saying in, in the smoking cessation world that it took seven times, seven serious quit attempts before people really quit smoking. So this is like quitting smoking for a lot of people, and it takes several attempts. So you, um, yes, you can ride the spike. Yes, you can live a life with drastically reduced or no carbs at all. And you just get back on. And uh, I'll explain that I'm the training wheels you know, at first. But when you learn how to ride the bike, you don't need the teacher anymore. And our support group here, you know, face to face or here online, and the Facebook group is called The Low Carb Support Group by Dr. Eric Westman. You might actually be watching the live stream through there. Uh, you might be watching the live stream through the YouTube channel, Adapt Your Life, uh, or Casey Durango or Amy Berger, to Nutrition YouTubes. So you might want to check out the Facebook group, The Low Carb Support Group uh, um, by Dr. Eric Westman to separate it from all the other low carb support groups that are out there. Um, can I get a, a check on the time? Uh, pardon? 805. Yeah, okay. So we're running out of time. Um, and uh, let's see. Sarah, Sarah and Jenny says, I was keto for over two years. And last year had an extremely difficult year and went way off the plan. I've been trying to get back on keto and I'm not finding it successful, as successful as the first time. Well, find a method that, that really works. Check out ericwestmanmd.com for either a sheet of paper, a book, or, or a video. Those, that's my method. Um, don't get sucked into difficult, um, uh, extremely expensive food or supplements, those kinds of things. They're not necessary to do a keto diet. You don't have to use apps. You don't have to check ketone levels. Um, you can if you want, but you don't have to. So try to find a, a simple kind of plan, and it'll make it so much easier for you, uh, I think. Um, I don't know if that hit the, um, oh, if I click on it, it actually goes on the screen. Huh. So let's see. Patty says, thank you, Dr. Weather. You can read along with me. Dr. Hallberg came in our office after lots of research, spending a week shadowing you, stating we are going low car. I, yeah, Patty, that, that's great. Um, and... Um, yeah, thanks to, to Dr. Sarah. Sadly, she passed, and um, also Adele Height. Both were so influential and helpful in the low-carb keto community. And I, yeah, I remember w when you came to the office. Um, don't quite understand how you guys went away with nine, with 30 total grams per day as the method. I, I, mean, I always said 20, but in fact, that's an interesting thing. Uh, some programs use 30 total grams per day and have great success uh, re reversing diabetes and, and all. Um, Wanda says, thank you for what you do. I've recently found your channel. I believe you've saved my life and certainly improved the future of my children. Well, you're very welcome. Um, and uh, I think, let's see, hello from Delaware. Thanks, and thanks to you for supporting each other in the chat. That's just fantastic. Um, Cricket Underhill says, is that a literary term? <laughs> I have to say thank you. Your videos would help me learn what to eat and not and to, eat, to feel full. Started keto October 4, October, November, down 37 pounds. Feel great, no cravings, no more headaches, and my hands don't hurt anymore. I see my doctor in February. We'll find out how my blood work looks. That's fantastic. Um, and. Uh, it's uh, above average in terms of the weight loss. I typically see one to two pounds per week, but if you're eating great um, nutrition, meaning protein comes first, there's a wide range of weight loss, including what, at what weight did you start? People who weigh more will lose more weight, generally speaking. Um, oh, Tom DeLauer has a delicious keto oatmeal. <laughs> well, remember, look at total carbs. I know Tom uh, Thomas DeLauer has a massive internet following. I've never met him. He, uh, uh, never, he's never spoken at one of the keto doctor 
meetings, uh, but I, I like a lot of what he teaches. I don't know that these special foods are a great idea. Uh, and if you came to me stuck or at a stall, I'd say get rid of all of these other, quote, keto foods and then run away. If it says keto, great for keto diets, don't go close to it. Um, and uh, oh, Pauline says it took me at least seven attempts to quit smoking. Yeah, well, and then a uh, word of wisdom that I learned, the people coming back to quit again said, I wish I'd never had one puff. Now that's a good lesson for the sugar addiction world. So it wasn't, I wish I hadn't had that first cigarette. That's what I was kind of expecting. Not, I've never really smoked myself, so I listened carefully. And it wasn't the first, it was the first puff. So be careful, if you're a like, true sugar processed food addict, you don't even want to have that one little taste. Even though that's a strategy we teach, just have a taste and all that. It might be that you can't have just a taste. Um, so, um, great. Let's. So we will be back here, uh, I think. Let's see, yeah, pretty sure. <laughs> no, we will be here the first Tuesday of January uh, and hopefully Casey Durango, Go Keto with Casey will join us um, as Casey usually says it may be simple, but it's not always easy. So if you need that kind of support, please seek it out here. Um, oh, there's a mention of the Woman's World magazine. That's so funny. Uh, oh, Judy, you were on the, yeah. Thank you so much for, for chiming in and, and thank you for being involved in that promotion. I, you know, I, I still get people saying the first thing they, they, they heard about me was from Woman's World and I kind of joke that peer-reviewed journal at the checkout aisle, you mean? Uh, so, so I'm prouder of the Annals of Internal Medicine article that nobody read. Uh, the, um, but it's great that that, um, that information got out that way. Um, and so um, uh, please join us again on, on the first Tuesday of January. What's the date? January 10th. January 3rd? Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll be here, um, be here that first week of January. Yeah, so January 3rd. I can't read. Same, <laughs> January 3rd, same channels, and, and um, apologize for not getting the alert out earlier today. That was, that was my fault. Um, and join us, if you can, at the Hilton 3800 Hillsborough <laughs> Road. I got it right for the third time. Uh, and there's a, a beautiful buffet they have here for a small fee. It was like 20, 20 bucks. Um, and uh, you don't have to get the dinner, but if you're in a hurry, you need to have something to eat. Um, and you're all very welcome. And have a wonderful holiday season, wonderful and safe one. Uh, you know, and uh, stay away from those carbs and uh, your, your body will, will thank you. And um, Anything else? Uh, are you glad you came? Yes. yes. Our, our, our travelers from the farthest uh, place uh, are glad they came. And so, um, again, thanks for joining us. And until the next time, bye-bye.